So, we meet again, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Back in the 1970s, I was brought up on these sort of spy movies, James Bond, uh, things like that. And I was really, really fascinated by the sort of gadgets that these kind of spies had, you know, listening devices, um, optical devices, things like that. And then during the Cold War, of course, you know, we had all of the sort of Soviets and the Americans kind of bugging each other with these really kind of sophisticated little gadgets. Picture here is a captured KGB bug from the sort of 1970s, something that was used in espionage. And I remember when we was at school in a uh, science lesson, we built a kind of FM sort of bugging transmitter, if you like, on those uh, plastic breadboard kits. And uh, yeah, we was able to put it in sort of one classroom and then all go off to another classroom. And we could sort of communicate, hear what was going on. And it totally fascinated me. Now, roll on, well, a number of years, and now on eBay, you can pick up these very small little FM sort of uh, mini bug transmitters. They're incredibly sort of cheap. So I thought, well, just for a bit of a crack, I would get one in and uh, we'd sort of see how well it works or maybe not. When you look at the uh, the spec for this tiny cheap device, it's actually quite impressive. It has a variable sort of a voltage input from three to nine volts. And when they sort of tested it at three volts, they said it had a transmitting range of up to 100 meters. So I thought we'd probably put that to the test. Ordered one in and it turned up, yeah, just a few weeks later from China. When I opened the bag, first thing that impressed me was it is absolutely tiny. You could really sort of fit this little circuit board inside a matchbox and make yourself a real kind of proper bug. Absolutely sort of mini miniature sort of electronics. Really sort of quite impressive. Now, as I said, this will run from uh, 3 volts to sort of 9 volts. Now, I'm going to use a couple of CR2032 cells. They typically put out sort of round about sort of 3 volts. So it's operating voltage. Probably you're expecting this to be round about sort of 5.5 to 6 volts and that's what we'll be doing the testing on. Very simple to get this working just need to solder on the battery pack wires and then a piece of antenna wire. I'm just using a sort of an odd piece of one meter. Um, it's worth noting that this transmitter does work within the FM frequency broadcast band so it is entirely illegal. <laughs> Nothing new on Freddy in the Shed. Yeah you can't really operate this legally um, but the output should be sort of so low that it shouldn't really cause too much interference. Not if you uh, unless you don't run this all the time of course. First job was to find out what uh, frequency had been set to in the factory. It doesn't sort of tell you. It's, it's obviously quite sort of random. So uh, just using the text on uh, sort of FM radio here, just sort of tune around and uh, until I find it. Uh, headphone warning here. There is a little bit of a squealing coming up. So uh, turn the volume down now. So I'd established that the microphone and transmitter was working. Just then there's a question of just trimming that very small pot to, to sort of try and find some clear airspace away from any strong FM broadcasting stations. Right, so this is going to be the, uh, the test in a Fred in the Shed way. <laughs> Nothing technical. So we've just got the little uh, transmitter there and got it wired up to the uh, studio light just as the uh, antenna. I don't know if that bulb's going to interfere at all. And I've got Bella's radio and just going to have the sport on so we get no copyright uh, flag ups. If that run was to continue that sequence, and that's the way it's going at the minute with Wolves leading by a goal to nil. It's just to hold the ball up, plays it out. And uh, yeah, just going to uh, put it on with the, uh, the sport there and get the little uh, tech sun over there as you can see and uh, yeah we're going to go for a little walkabout and uh, we'll just sort of see how well the transmitter performs as I say I'm not sure with the antenna length it doesn't really come with any instructions so I might have the sort of you know the wrong antenna length for its sort of optimum performance plus you can put more voltage in I'm only putting in just five and a half volts you can go up to nine volts which will increase the range even more but anyway we'll, uh, we'll give that a go we'll uh, walk around see uh, see how far that transmits so here we are just out in the garden now, with just the antenna barely extended really. And that is the little F transmitter, that's not the radio. Well, it's close to a broadcasting radio station. Direct. 
that radio station trying to get over the top. Yeah, that, that is a problem. It's so close to a commercial radio station. I might have to retune it. Yeah, the problem, as I suspect, once we get into the car here, is um, 96.4, where we are. It's right by a commercial radio station. Which is 96.6 FM. So I'm going to have to... So there's a few radio stations around there, so I'm going to have to try and retune it. It's very delicate, but I'm just going to have to try and get it a little bit away from those uh, commercial FM radio stations. But it works, so bear with me. Let me retune it, and we'll do some more testing. What do you reckon, Ken? Right, so uh, retuned it. Um, managed to get it down to 87.2, which is at right at the bottom of the commercial band. And there doesn't seem to be any stations uh, transmitting down there. I don't suppose it get out as well on the sort of lower frequencies. So, uh, yeah, just going to uh, do a bit more testing on the same as before and see, uh, see how we get on down the bottom there. Well, it seems a little bit more stable. 87.2. Well, that's the end of the garden. And that's a very, very clear signal. So uh, I think I need to go out into the car. Now, would you believe it? <laughs> My tune only goes down to 87.5 in the car. Uh, so it's there, but it's... Uh, Unfortunately, it's not clear, so I'm going to have to be a bit of a bit of a deal, and I'm going to have to walk down the road with the transistor radio. Well, the transistor radio, the Texan ain't going to work. I thought I was going to have the comfort of the car, but ain't going to work. Okay, this is where Fred looks a bit of a knob again. I don't know. I'm not. Well, ask. I'll tell you what. Ask Ali Bruce Ball. He's probably into some odd sport like wrestling. Well, that would be a strange mix. The boat race. Well, I'm about 100 metres, I guess, from the house, standing out in the street, looking a bit of a knob, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to point the camera around. <laughs> a little bit too much personal information, but, uh, yeah, that is 100 metres from the house, and that signal is still five bar strong. Three, big doorman, a little bit of faint there. Right, it's about probably 140 metres. Signal's fading a little bit. Struggling a little bit. But it's still we're picking up. Right, going to bring this to a close. I do look a bit silly out here. But yeah, it's about 140 metres from the house. About 140, and uh, still got a uh, S2 to S4 signal. That's not bad, is it, for something that's less than two quid? It's quite worrying, isn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, you got to get back to the house now before I get uh, heckled or arrested for looking a little bit suspicious in the street. All the Watford fans in front of us, on their feet, applauding their team. On. So I'm back indoors, and yeah, I did meet my neighbour as well. <laughs> I must have looked a bit of a bit of a wally, but I think he's used to me, to be honest. So I'm impressed by that. You know, that was quite impressive. Um, over 100 metres, and it was still going. It was starting to pick up a little bit of interference at the end there, but I reckon you could probably stretch that. Oh, I don't know, easy, probably 160 metres, something like that. All you'd need to do is be get a bit elevated to get onto some high ground. So for something that's so cheap. You know, bearing in mind this was uh, less, well, £1.40 something I paid, I think. You, I've seen these for like 99p. So they're a great bit of fun, you know, you can have with these. And uh, quite impressed by the sort of size of it. You could also sort of do probably better with a battery and make it even smaller. You could put it inside a matchbox if, if you really wanted to sort of make a proper little spy bug. And, uh, yeah, very, quite impressive. I mean, you know, it's a bit of fun, isn't it, for less than a couple of pounds. It's kept me amused, anyway, on a sort of rather damp kind of Sunday afternoon. So, there you go. These are all over eBay. 
Um, I'll try and leave a link in the description. A lot of my links have already expired by the time that I put the videos up, but I will try and leave a link in the uh, in the ex in the description there. So that's it. There we go. Little uh, little kind of spy bug to go with the uh, little thing that I did that went through walls <laughs> a little few weeks ago. If you missed that video, there's a little kind of like condenser microphone that you stuck onto a wall or door and you could hear through that so what i'll do is i'll leave a little pop-up for that one at the end there if you missed that video that was quite interesting but uh i can say well as for now thanks for sort of sticking with this nonsense just a little bit of fun on a sunday afternoon for me there's the old uh, there's the old thumbs up cheers thanks for your view time it's always welcome if you're not already done so give us consider skin us a sub that's always appreciated and also finally give the old video the sort of thumbs up that lets me know you're watching the videos and you're enjoying them and encourages me to do more but as for now as always stay safe look after yourselves and yeah catch you all on the next one